Tech starts up, he has start he has founded uh, various uh, tech starts up like Minute and Guidely. Currently, he is focused on creating Hopebox, a much needed suicide prevention app for Nepal. He is also deeply committed to social causes. He's a co-founder of Nepal Rising, a nonprofit organization dedicated to asset, dedicated to asset-based community development in Nepal. Dr. Saurabh Sista. Dr. Gandhi, thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, very, very glad to be here and uh, very glad to be bringing up topic of uh, epic importance in this uh, day and age. Um, I want to introduce our uh, panelist here, uh, Dr. Dovan Rai. Uh, she has a PhD from Worcester Polytech uh, Polytechnic Institute. Um, she uh, does you know, AI research and education, uh, integrating games and intelligent tutoring system, which we will actually talk about later today. Uh, currently, she is working as a visiting lecturer in the computer science department at Mount Holyoke College. Um, and she writes about social political issues in Nepal. And Dr. Gokarna Sharma, um, he's a faculty member at uh, Kent State University uh, in the, the computer science department. And he does research on scalable computer architecture and emerging technologies. So that's pretty awesome. Um, so we are really, really glad to have both of you here uh, providing your expertise. I am an enthusiast. I really don't work in generative AI. So we are counting on um, you to provide the insight, uh, your experience, your knowledge on the topic, um, and especially how it pertains to um, academia um, and and also like how it relates to uh, you know how things are going in Nepal and what we can do in Nepal, right? So to kick off uh, our conversation here, uh, let me let me go with, uh, with Dr. Sharma first, uh, and and Dr. Wright, please feel free to like interject and 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 join in anytime as well. So just to level set, right? Uh, let's talk about you know we hear all of these terms AI, ML, um, oh, you know. Uh, large language model, you know, um, so what is it, right? Uh, and and chat GPT has brought that to the forefront of everybody, right, to uh, to talk about. So what is it? W what are all these terms mean? Thank you, Saurabhzi, for uh, introduction. I'm so glad to be here. Um, so uh, we'll uh, have, you know, broader discussion. But just to start with, AI is artificial intelligence, right? So you are looking for something that you want to see from your data. So particularly for it to work, you need to have some data. Based on that data, you want to infer some information. You know, you infer something that is important, right? So in machine learning, what did you do? In machine learning, we have data and then we call them, you know, the features or parameters. So we take some parameters that are important to infer something or make a decision on something and then you use these parameters and then you make a model. And then you have the test data. So basically you classify, you, you have some data based on that data, you train that model. And then after you train that model, then you have the new data. When that new data comes, you are gonna feed that data to the model and model will give you the decision based on the information that the, the, the model is trained, right? The model can be very simple. For example, it can be a function, right? You input data and then there is a black box that acts as a function and then the function will give you output, right? That's, that's the typical machine learning. So uh, for example, the decision can be this. You can have just two categories you will say yes or no, you know? So you give some data and then the output would be either yes or no, right? Or you can say below 50% or above 50%, right? So you can have, that is called the binary decision, right? So there are just two decisions. You can actually extend that to have multiple decisions, right? You can have say, I want to have 10 different decisions on the data that I have. Right. So now that was our machine learning um, uh, platform. Now there's a new model, the generative AI model. What it does is it can actually do that. And then it does more, way more. For example, you have uh, some information, you know, you have some word, and then now you want to infer the next word. Let's suppose in sentence, what does it do? You have subject and verb and object, right? So let's suppose you have given subject and verb now you can infer 
what object it would go there and fill the sentence to make some context. Okay, so for example, you might say, I ate, maybe, you know, I ate breakfast or lunch or dinner, right? They will just fill it. So now, when you have this inference, then you can actually write many, many sentences, right? And then that's what the generative AI does to talk in the very basic level. Yeah, thank you for that answer. Um, I, I want to ask Dr. Rai, uh, what, why, why are we talking about this now? Why at this point in in humankind history, right? Because uh, we've heard of like AI since like we were young, you know, like from movies, and and it had predominantly been in like the research community, you know, talking about algorithms, tinkering with that. Because this is not a new concept. So why now? Why are we talking about it now? I mean, the obvious elephant in the room is Chat GPT, obviously, right? Yeah. Uh, but why did it happen now? What brought it to us? Uh, yeah, I think uh, that's that's a very good question, right? So again, um, historically, one, one, the idea of AI as a field, it just got to possess more support than daily voice, okay? Right? And especially you machine learning, le, it may about uh, it's an impactful result in 2015 16. It's a very good result, especially in the image recognition. And so, AI, machine learning, it was like, again, a professional community buzz by that. And particularly since last year, right? Since last December, it has really exploded. It has really taken over people's imagination. This is the main reason for this. It's a very good result. It's a very good result. It's a very good result. Um, uh, uh, imagination it has always captured right, no? but now it feels like it is there right now uh, but it is there for us and it is there very like uh, uma about you chat gpt image recognition or but some some people are doing it and then you are a user one as a few so you are like either data feed got a uh, polished results and it is result method in the end point ma. Over oil as it feels like this AI and machine learning is in your hand, you know, you are directly interacting with it, you know, but the affiliate interact got it all. So I don't know. So even you can create some app based on that. You can even, you know, extend that. So it feels like somehow you are on the, you know, like about it. Except like consumer um, machine learning to truly consumer product boy, but no, especially about technology wise, it has existed for a while, eh, no? but open AI, let's say, is good user interface, is good usability, let's say, it's very mentally accessible way, man, imagination capture, go to the guy, log you, eh, no? and your orco could I, it's like the orco man, see, my right, imagination in both ways, eh, no? as a good and like as a threat, but he like, what's the case of one, like, hey, different facet perception, judgment, So, image recognition, speech recognition, aspect of human intelligence, recommendation system, judgment for human recognition. generation create novel create creativity, generation, the way human do generate is like after we learn, right? Now, after we understand things, right? Now, after we kind of like, I mean, they understand, feel, got it, pass it. I mean, generate, got it, okay, good, right? Now, or if the machine ne got it, pass it, I mean, like, what got it, man, that's it. That machine ne got it, got it, that feeling, that understanding, that way, na, that agi go got it, jile, pano back. Just it's just like another mechanical process. That we kind of anthropomorphize. Yeah, computer le, that la body ra sa, image di ra sa, art banana ra kusa, you know, coffee tale hi ra sa. Ile to pakke puni buzi ola, mosses gari ola, computers abo ekdam intelligent, unse ni boy ola, sentient boy ola. Banana ra amle se yo general intelligence, sentience, unse ni to banana ra machine ko intelligence lai. So now it becomes not just a machine intelligence. It feels like more, more um, given human like intelligence. Yeah, you know. I think to do it akura le gorda te ola. Now it feels like very immediate man chair lai. Yeah, um, it it like brought this concept of artificial intelligence and generative AI, Gen AI, into the mainstream by allowing people a taste of it, right? Like that's that's pretty much what brought it like mainstream. Right, right. You know? Yeah. So I wanted to ask, like you know, and this I think will uh, cover the entire entirety of this discussion. Um, but I wanted to like specifically ask about. How is generative AI impacting um, instruction and the process of learning, like in in academia, right? So, as part of uh, what you'll do, 
is you know you have to teach classes and stuff like that right um and then also utilize some sort of a generative you know technology generative ai technology into doing research and and so it, there's both part of it right the the teaching part of it and also using part of it so uh what are some of the effective ways right uh, that we can use uh generative ai in in both of these aspects so again this is a very broad topic we can pick one side of it maybe let's pick instruction first right and then and then and then go from there right um per the instruction so uh, particularly in academia uh, when we talk about the impact of uh, chat gpt and others in academia so uh, there are three factions one faction is very supportive of these technologies because it will bring innovation Another uh, category is they want to somehow curb or somehow not want to see chat GPT involved in instruction. And then there is a third category. They are mostly indifferent to this technology. They say that, okay, there was a tradition of these new innovations and then, okay, these innovations come and then the main um, teaching is not going to change. So I put myself in the first category. I want this innovation. I want to see development of this one and everything. And then I'm very supportive of this one. But the, the fear always is you do not want to shortcut the process of teaching and learning. So chat GPT, what is happening? For example, you um, the assign, um, uh, you know, assign students to write an essay. They will go, you chat GPT, and then they come up with an essay. They did not go through the process of learning and everything. They just um, uh, interacted with chat GPT and then chat GPT wrote an essay and then they will submit that essay. And then now instructors, they need to evaluate that essay. And then that essay looks amazing. It's very coherent. Uh, you know, they, it, it looks nice, right? And then, and then, so there is another part of it is okay. It looks nice. Doesn't mean that the information provided is hundred percent true and reliable, right? And then, so, um, so now the question is okay. ChatGPT can do certain things, but how reliable the information that is provided by ChatGPT in terms of you crawl the data and then in that you are getting the answers, but how reliable these answers are and then whether this information is 100% true. So it goes back to what information was fed in the model. If you feed the information in the model and then that information is not 100% true, then the output that you get is also not 100% true. Probably it's a little bit distorted, right? And then for that one, I think there is more responsibility to the instructors on how to make sure that the information that is provided is true, reliable, and then it is verified, right? That is the challenge that I see in academia from the instructor side. There is the learning side from the students. We, we can talk about it too, you know, so it will it'll help them in learning in certain ways. We can go there, but from the instructor side, there is a challenge on how do you control this? How do you make sure that you you know this involvement of this technology is not shortcutting the learning process for students because we want them to know the fundamentals so we want them to go through the process of learning so they understand and then when they go you know in their career they can use this knowledge and then do something better right and then if there is a shortcut probably they will not have that information, not have the fundamental concept, and then there might be problematic. We do not know the implication of that. And then that is a challenge from the instruction side. Right. Dr. Wright? Uh, as, uh, again, um, so now it's just created, like as soon as this chat GPT came out, right? So within a month or so, there was like in the whole this academic sphere. So there was a lot of excitement and fear, right? On existential crisis, one. You know, oh my God! If Chat GPT is teaching, I'm like, "Give or not? Or is it teaching in the right way or not?" Of course, any assessment, Gorni, lot of plagiarism, of a the death of college essay, one. You just say, you know, there was a lot of the IO. But it's like they, and then of course there was a lot of like potentials, you know, opportunities. It was like very like hyperbole conversation on both sides, one. You and in a way that hyperbole conversation is justified, you know, because it is really impactful. It is really like. Uh, revolutionary, I know, and it can go both ways. So, to, to, to conversation, to alertness is very justified. 
but at the same time, we might polarized conversation. We might lose the nuance and other marginalized voices. So, in 2008, I decided to use AI in education. So, personally, like I am a tech optimist. I know how this technology can be used to use education. So, chat GPT, in a way, it's like one of the like great teaching learning tool, as Soro Jile Bana says. So, teaching tool is also learning tool. It's an, you know, assessment tool, self-assessment tool, and all that. So it's, it was like very genius because the chat GPT lay up a magical kuraki that actually the magic is really on the collective knowledge that we have created, right? Internet, our human have created this knowledge base. You know? The real that's magic the data, lies there. Right? Yeah, Sorry? The data that we feed. Yeah, so there's so oh, yeah. much, there's so much data, there's so much knowledge, there's so much information out there. But chat GPT le ki gaur banda? This slide je ekdam ei ora generalized, customized solution banu na. Ina dia baako kura lai je ek simply aggregate gauri ra, customize gauri ra. Ina tapa ko prompt onu sara. Ina so even if you want to like, oh, what is machine learning? Then you can modify your prompt and it gives you different granularity level ma. Ina and even you can tell them exactly lo mero your data ma ir deo, atha wa you mala code lake deo mero unse ni like cost you know customize this uh like letter draft for me you know atha do the literature review for me bani ek simply abam ni the genie bani bani ni na the genie bani as they it feels like it's like a very good like uh learning companion or that kind of learning tool you know. Only people can, as I said, use it like for aggregate the knowledge, do, do the literature review. The, you can use it to like even like some recommendation stuff. Why not? But Google ma gara search gorno banda. They are gorib. And it it summarizes and it gives you this more customized, personalized search results. I know. And it can also like generate new ideas. I know. Tapa like to insight open dinner socks up. And yeah, right course. So to, to all capabilities. Huh? And again, like again, go kono zile bondo ba. Because say the reason it is. So it is very similar to what came before. It's also very like exponentially more powerful. I know, but I'm like Wikipedia. Some compare garden over. Wikipedia, I'm not that funny. Excited me to feel do it at you and die. No, oh, I was happy about you. So you mentioned you have a part, you know, get a part in Jansen Wikipedia. It just dumbed down. I know, and if there's a lot of fallacies in Wikipedia, it's going to be similar. One is they. In a way, some of the, you know, many over the time Wikipedia, but you have a similar reliable source price. Of course, the accuracy check on a part of you, I know. Aba chat GPT ko pani, aba yeah, the reliability, accuracy, the questions ha. Ani over time, it will be better ola. Tara, you always have to. Tara, aba chat GPT or Wikipedia me ki farak sa bandari. Chat GPT, because it talks in a very conversation, we can anthropomorphize, right? It feels like some expert is talking from behind the thing. So, it, it talks with so much the certainty and authority, you know? And we project that authority, authority to chat GPT, you okay? know? Wikipedia is a crowdsource. It feels like this, like, you know, piece together thing. But chat GPT feels like some expert is really talking with so much confidence and authority. And we can be all like taken aback, you know? So, I think we'll talk about the challenges later. But you know, just to early conflict, God, that's it. I think we read that. Wikipedia is a good place to start, but a terrible, terrible place to stop our learning. I think I would say the same thing with ChatGPT. It's a very good place to start, but it's a terrible place to end. So let's use it as a tool, but not regard it as some kind of like authority. Yeah, so, you know, like there's the optimist, there's the pessimist, and there's the indifferent, right? Um, and I was thinking about this yesterday. Um, so I think... Uh, Dr. Sadeep mentioned this in our last meeting, actually, that when the calculator came about, people were like kind of opposed to that as well, right? And and I also had read, there's a book on this actually uh, about the zipper, how the zipper was invented and all the people who preferred the hooks and the buttons were like completely against zippers, right? And now look at it like, you know, I think every American uh, has 14, they use 14 different zippers per year. <laughs> this is a fact, like a random fact. So I was thinking, um, AI and Gen AI is inevitable, right? Uh, whether people like it or not. So the question is, you know, like how we had the concern of the equity of education before and even now. Then we had the concern of the digital divide, right? And how, how do we bridge that? And now we're talking about AI literacy, right? Because without AI literacy, and by literacy, I, I mean, well, it could mean like a number of things. It could mean access, um, it could mean proper usage and proper cautions, right? 
without that, um, I feel like there's going to be a lot of people and a lot of potential left on the table, right? So how do we, um, how do we, how do we bring this AI to the mainstream, not just here in the Western countries, but perhaps in Nepal as well? And let me let me talk about an example, right? And I hinted on when I was reading your bio, uh, Dr. Rai, I hinted on this. Um, so you know, there's a concept of this robo class, right? And there is Again, there's, uh, you know, people on both sides of this camp, like, you know, one camp will say that, oh, it can never replace human, all of that, right? And and maybe it shouldn't. <clears throat> and on the other side, people are very optimistic and for obvious reasons as well, I'll, I'll, I'll explain like a little bit. Um, so if you think about it, you know, it's the combination of human intelligence and the machine intelligence that can provide the best output. And I think you hinted on this, right, Dr. Rai, because it should not be the end, ChatGPT should not be the end, but it should be a part of the journey, right, of the learning journey. Um, if you think about it, uh, the instructors in a classroom, instructor in a classroom has always been there, but they supplement with books, right? Book is a technology as well that they're supplementing, and so is AI. And I see them as like something very, very similar. Right, that's one point. The second point is that uh, for basic classes, like your one-on-one -on -one classes, right? Do we really need a full-time instructor to provide that education to, to, to students, right? Uh, some people will say yes, some people will say no. But on the other side of this coin, if we have that sort of capability, that sort of technology, will that democratize education a little bit, right? In parts of Nepal, where you don't have quality instructors, will educational equity be, be brought? What do you guys think about this? What I think on this is it can supplement the learning process, but it cannot complement it. So there is a big debate on why we need instructors, why we even need universities now, right? We, we talk about that, but so what is lacking here in uh, Chad CPD and this new development is check and balance. How do you check and then see that the information that is provided by Chad CPD is the tr true information? And then uh, it's accurate, it's not biased. And then for that one, you need to have someone who could provide uh, insight from their experience, inside from their knowledge, inside inside from um, uh, the the learning process, the the fundamental of science, and then so that's why um, uh, ChatGPT can do certain things amazingly well. For example, for example, let's suppose you are in Netflix or or you are looking for some genre of movies to watch, and then you say, hey, "Can you give recommendation to uh, some movies uh, related to maybe this particular movie or this kind or this genre?" It does amazingly well because that information is there, and then so uh, that information, even though it's let's suppose ninety percent accurate, it does not hamper. Uh, uh, you know, some uh, fundamental concept, okay, because it's a recommendation, right? Uh, so, um, so this, this kind of uh, areas where you crawl some information and based on that information, you want to uh, infer something, it does amazingly well. It is going to replace this kind of uh, jobs and then this, this landscape is going to change. It's going to be completely different. But when you come to uh, come to innovation coming uh, we say the you know state of science right we say that this is the state of science and then when you develop new knowledge then we advance the state of science right so in terms of advancing the state of science then chat CPD is probably not going to be very very applicable there for example it can do certain things for example I want to know the state of science and then I can say to chat CPD can you give me all the literature on this particular topic, it can give you that information. So, but that information, again, you need to verify. You need to make sure that that information is reliable. And then so for that one, you need to use human intelligence. You need to 
do something on top of that. But certain things it's going to replace. For example, there's manual jobs, right? For example, there's there's recommendation systems. For example, the the you know Netflix and others they use amazingly uh, complex recommendation algorithms. Probably it is going to do something else on on that. And then some jobs are going to change forever. But teaching and learning in terms of okay what is the exact fundamental and then why you need to study this fundamental and what is the meaning of this one right so when you need to understand that so that's why i was i was talking about there is no shortcut to learning it should not shortcut the process of learning because that, that way probably uh, there is a gap on the the knowledge and then that gap will hamper the graduates although they probably they will graduate go and then it, they will hamper in their career and then that's the goal that we don't want for them to be hampered because of this technology. So, so, the, the, so you want to go through the process of learning. And then that's why the, the, in the instruction, there are many, many concepts that are coming into picture. For example, how could you beat ChatGPT? You know, okay, you you give one homework assignment and then and then Chad GPT will answer something, right? And then so how can you now beat that Chad GPT in terms of learning, you know? So or challenge the students to uh, see what Chad GPT gives you as answer and then how what you write you write as answer to that particular problem or that particular assignment. So that that kind of check and balance is going on as well. And then so we have to, I think we have to inform the students on the impact of these technologies in the process of learning and then make them aware. I think awareness comes into picture here. Yeah, I think this is like really early stage, right? Uh, in terms of the generative AI uh, technology. And I think there is like a lot of research that's needed to do, do like a thing, like, you know, instructor only, instructor plus chat GPT and chat GPT or, or some sort of generative AI only kind of teaching um, and then see its impact on achievement and aptitude of students, right? I think that those kind of research will come eventually, I would say. It's but you're right. I think, you know, like it, it's not going to replace instructor when the instructor is available. But, you know, I kind of have a feeling that if there is like really, uh, there is a possibility of not having an instructor at all, would there be a self-guided way that, you know, this technology can be used by, by students, you know, to learn and to democratize learning like a little bit, right? Um, and um, actually Khan Academy, uh, I think gets it right. They don't even call it an educator, they call it a tutor. So they have this AI, generative AI system in there, you know, and they call it a tutor, it's called Amigo AI. Um, and it just supplements, you know, how students learn um, in that area. Um, so in the context of Nepal, right? How can we, what do you think is the state of uh, uh, AI literacy uh, at this moment, both for students as well as for, uh, for people in academia, right, researchers? Um, and what tools, you know, are there that, uh, from your experience, you can recommend, uh, you know, that people look, look into, uh, you know, to, to get some ideas around this topic? Oh, uh, let me add to that. I'll get a conversation, you know, that uh, I, I again reiterate to both of you that uh, there's no shortcut to learning, you know, as Gokarni Jili Bhandavajas say, and the tools can uh, supplement but not replace, say, and you're teaching learning, one. could I say, it's not just a cognitive process, say, it's a lot of like a metacognitive emotional process, you know, in the reason some people might learn, not just because like, you know, the, the information is not getting into their head, right? You know? So it's a very holistic process. So and like I'm like the mechanical way, you know, the information one could say or about it pass gone, couldn't pipe but uh any transfer gone, this electric uh to get it, electric transfer got as the wire about upon it. This to how could you know it's a very, very holistic process. This could like uh, uh, we need the yeah the 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 chat GPT learning companion, learning tools, they are all going to be helpful and uh, again. Coming now to your question, like Nepal, my case of one, you know. So, Mala, I look at the by Rasabani. Ekarikali, your technology like this tools, you know, it's such a big opportunity for place like Nepal, you know, where we don't have highly qualified people, we don't have a lot of like, um, 
resources I need to like it the resource gap mean gap corner collagi of a kind of academy to tools or really I know a lot of the help got in it I was but at the same time key or that threat someone a boy tools or who um uba it was I know it advanced by that was her of daily got that tools back tools but and the signal tools that need to surrender gurney no tools man it's any are we going to surrender our cognitive faculties, our cognitive skills to the tools itself? I know. especially the language skills or it can help you draft a letter. I know. So if you if you have the cognitive skills, if you have the metacognitive skills, I know this is where this metacognitive skills, like learning about your own learning, being able to analyze, observe, and regulate your own learning, so important. I know. so great. I know. I know on a to go border cook room or the US go farm cook cook room I know so the more automated things become more easy becomes you become atrophied I know on the mala euta ki sa bandha hai ni about gornu parni jay hai milit you tool batter sikera jun resource gap or like fulfill gornu parni hai na you're a teacher little I use gornu parni oh that I'm a little less surrender gornu ki dityo gornu tiyo sa on your arcus ki sa bandha nipal ma euta mali euta thread the heko jay our, um, because we have this very hierarchy of knowledge, I know. We are a little intimidated by any, I know. Till I interrogate I spoke Gorney, this part sickney, till I interrogate Gorney, we make a lot of Janis a sock you one as to, I know. But Mosse not Janis, you know. Our teacher, the classroom, I can only pal my camera that got the I'm your tools or classroom and lock you. And some, a lot of teachers were kind of hesitant to use this tool, okay. I know. You know what? I read the tool, let's say the teacher is sickney, but that when the tool is going to. Some kind of like exposed teacher code knowledge gap, you know. Other student le pani ho, sir lai, other ma'am le banda. That you to learn it hari sa pani as do, you know. So kali kai se ami lai se to expertise song other version tio tio song achi, you know. But of course, tabe ko chat GPT lai dere information hola, you know. Maybe it has more concrete information, but your teacher maybe the the teacher doesn't have like a they level ko information source, I know, but a teacher, a human teacher has a lot to give me the I know. like the kati kura thasa, the ulai context thasa, ulai bidati thasa, ulai jo ke boyu bani, ulai historical context thasa, ulai tyas tyas ko usko bidati ko bau na usko social context, social cultural context thasa, I know. Ulai tyo bidati usko aur bidati dehe ko unsa, I know. So to supply kura aru jun knowledge jun lande quantify or kama easily the sani value gorde I know. About a door to kiss one that I mean, you do not send it up really about Kiri Hammer Bob in Jelly Nail Dicks of Manera. The 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 fear about going to more quantitative mechanistic domain is what if we only value that that is kind of like quantified, some kind of fine, a tutu to a door so on your orco could as a um again, my tea of oil it's a sick county of information sick on his hong song information like costly assess gurney. Dunto bunch critical thinking skills, metacognitive skills, I know. Tapile afternoon knowledge, like afternoon learning, like what's it? Now you you don't only need to observe what you are learning, but how you are learning itself. Yeah, you know. The bill afternoon learning line critically in the parenta, two skill egg the majority is high. So two is I'm a Nepal Mati. Oh my god, like as I said, like I'm really optimistic and excited, but at the same time, I don't know, it can go both ways. Yeah, uh, there are there are there are challenges not just in Nepal. There are challenges in the USA as well uh, with this technology um, because um, uh, I I teach here um, undergraduate and graduate students and then um, they are from US. They are from you know outside, and then you see that um, uh, there is a constant struggle between instructors and students. The students want to do less amount of work. And then uh, just uh, you know, and then finish the course with a good grade, right? 
that's and then instructors want to give as much information as possible hey go above and beyond and then learn this concept these fundamentals are going to come to uh, your rescue in your career right and then so there is a there is a struggle and then students so now they found a way to uh, to uh, you know feed the assignment and everything to a tool tool will give answer and then now, whether they want to look into that answer and then work more on that answer, maybe revise it, improve it, uh, everything, you know, it can work as a first draft. Okay, you, you're writing an essay, it, you know, the, the, whatever you get can be the first draft, and then now work based on that. Okay, so think about there is one international student came to US studying um, computer science or anything. And then so, you know, there is a language gap. I mean, English as a second language. And then, you know, they might have a difficulty, uh, you know, putting um, words in a certain way and everything. Chat GPT will do that for you. Amazing, right? Very coherent, everything. And then you can work on top of that. So it can act as a first draft, but that is not your final summation that you do. You know, that is not your final draft. You know, it's, it's not that. It's at first, it's the beginning. That's why it's like, it can supplement your learning, but it cannot complement your learning. So in Nepal, the, the, the thing is the chat GPT are uh, interactive medium. So you ask something, they will give you answer. You ask again, uh, they will give you answer, right? Now, the, the kind of answer that you get depends on what kind of question that you ask, how specific you ask that platform, right? And then so there is a very new engineering uh, branch that is starting that is prompt engineering, right? How do you write your query so that you get relevant answer? Because ChatGPT has vast source of information and then how you get that information out that you want very particular specific on some topic depends on how do you interact. And then for that one, there is a big awareness that is needed on how do you use these tools? Okay, you know, this tool brings many, many challenges and opportunities, but the first is, you know, that, that you know, people in academia, people in research and everything, they are thinking about that. As a user, how am I gonna interact with this tool so that I get information as specific as possible for my need? Right. And then that is a challenge to that challenge. I see not just in Nepal, probably a little bit more in Nepal. I see here as well in US as well. I see that challenge. And then so I, I deal with uh, those students every day. And then so um, this maybe maybe gap is more in Nepal. We need to uh, see uh, the, 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 you know, the result that you get, the, the answer that you get from query. Do you trust that answer 100% or you go and verify the source. What is the source from which you got that answer, right? And then so this verification, I again go back to verification because that is so much important in this context because you might get ranges of answers and then you don't know which answer that you trust or which one is accurate, which is coming from the reliable source. So whatever answer that you get, you have to go and check the source, you know, the news platform and everything. So that that matters the most. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things that I see, you know, in context of Nepal uh, is definitely the relevance of information, right? Because if the model is as good as the data is fed, then we don't know how much data, uh, you know, with Nepal's cultural uh, relevance you know, is fed into the model, right? And also, I mean, there's a lot of people who talk about like, <coughs> Uh, empathy and all that kind of stuff, uh, you know, that AI lacks. Um, somebody needs to, uh, let me see if I can. Okay. Um, yeah, so, you know, it lacks empathy. So how, how relatable can it be? Because, you know, it's very different than a calculator, right? Calculator is very objective, like two plus two is four, right? Uh, but this seems very objective and essentially one company, you know, OpenAI and Sam Altman, you know, controlling what data gets fed, fed into that is kind of like, you know, potentially risky, right? Like we don't know. So, so let's talk about um, how do you use, uh, you know, some sort of a generative AI tech 
Uh, how do you incorporate that in your uh, instruction as well as in your research? In my research, I use it to look into the literature. So the, what happens is you go to Google Scholar or any other medium, and then you look for your literature. Now what you do is, uh, hey, can you give me um, information related to this one? What is the state of the art on this one? And then you get some basic information. And then based on that information, you get the pointers. And then you go and then verify those pointers to see what is the state of the art. Or so another uh, way is I um, use it to write very basic on, hey, can you give me the summary of the state of the art? And then it will give you the summary, you know, somehow putting information here and there. And then um, uh, that way, now you can work on top of it. Right, the technical contribution, the new innovation, and everything. Of course, it is not going to do, and then you work on your one. I you I try to not use a lot because what happens is, when I do the technical writing, then when I'm there writing on my own using my own words and everything, somehow these ideas, you know, somehow uh, the, you know I can play with my ideas and then make sure that whether it is working or not. Probably it's a line of thinking, you know, line of how how you train to do things um that is in my research if you go into my teaching then what am i doing is i have an assignment i feed that assignment to chat uh ask chat possible answers and then and then i can see uh, how chat gives you you know response to the you know the assignment that you feed to chat and then based on that, I play with many different kinds of queries to see ranges of answers and then and then try to, uh, uh, you know, tweak some uh, some of my assignment uh, information to see how it reacts and then try to uh, see, uh, the, you know, possible answers that you get using ChatGPT. And then when I get student responses to my assignments, then I could go and see what is happening. And then how are they reacting to that? You know, how are they using ChatGPT? And then, so it's more into uh, information collection than reacting to what is happening. The system uh, uses by Kent State, there is a, uh, there is a, you know, this, this plagiarism and everything. And then there is a chat GPT context as well. There is a new tool. And then that tool also gives answer on whether the submission used some chat GPT fragment there or not. So that way um, uh, it's more into very initial phase, collecting information and then how to deal with this technology than reacting to um, the technology and try to do something. Dr. Yeah, so my let's say in machine learning or a course for as undergrad or like, right? So chat GPT is a topic of conversation, but I also make sure that people of general man say about when topic of 2016 match, uh, get image recognition AI, AI equals to machine learning equals to image recognition boy, right? Now, let's say about AI equals to uh, chat generative AI equals to chat GPT one as the bad side, and of course, I tell them that okay, this is not. So I don't want to focus too much on it, but then I want to use it some kind of case study to kind of like do more critical analysis, try to use it, you know, try to look at the limitations and um, uh, the strength of machine learning itself, I know. And so it's kind of like, uh, I, I tell them that, okay, first go look at this question, use chat GPT to answer it and try to do your own research, I know, and try to do this like critical reflection, whatever, really, so the rack अब मैले एग्जाम मा चाहिँ उनीहरुलाई अहिले सम्म अनि अगेन यो चैट जीपीटी अब हाम्रो जुन टीचिङ पोलिसी हुन्छ नि हैन मेरो लागि चाहिँ चैट जीपीटी इज लाइक ओपन एंडेड आइ इट्स लाइक अ इट्स अ पोलिसी इन प्रोग्रेस भनि राछ आइम स्टिल लाइक काइन्ड अफ फिगरिंग आउट हाउ टु एक्चुअली गर्ने किन भने अब आइ डोन्ट वान्ट टु ब्लक इट बट आइ डोन्ट वान्ट टु लाइक एनकरेज अ सर्टकट टु हुन्छ नि त्यो गर्ने हैन इन इन अ वे एज अ मैले एज आइ नीड टु आउटस्मार्ट चैट जीपीटी इटसेल्फ राइट व्हेन आइ लाइक डिवाइज अ क्वेशन सो इट्स आल्सो अ गुड चैलेंज फॉर मी हैन कसरी मैले त्यो गर्न सक्छु भनेर अनि एग्जाम मा चाहिँ मैले टेक होम एग्जाम मा चाहिँ आई टोल्ड देम लाइक नॉट टु यूज चैट जीपीटी नॉट बिकॉज दैट आई डोंट वांट टु बट फॉर द फॉर द फॉर द असाइनमेंट दे कैन यूज इट बट नॉट फॉर द एक्चुअल होमवर्क बिकॉज द होमवर्क गर्ने बेला सॉरी फॉर द फाइनल एग्जाम किन फाइनल एग्जाम मा त उनीहरु प्रेसर हुन्छ नि त एन्ड व्हेन यू फील लाइक व्हेन द स्टेक्स आर हाई राइट सो यू आर मोर इन्क्लाइन टु यूज द शॉर्टकट so i want to use it let them use it when you know they are more relaxed they are more exploratory but not when it's kind of like very high stress and high stake 
and again so uh, again like connecting to last you said like like chat gpt doesn't have empathy right it doesn't of course it doesn't have this empathy but then it can mimic empathy right and this again where i see the threat especially in nepal na you know kina kisa banda heri ab because it can mimic empathy and it can talk like your friend ani ab kisa banda heri and people can reveal their their information right and ab aile kati jana le chai chat gpt chai ab especially yo mental health ma use garne bhanira cha haina teaching ma pani ta haina on nepal ma we see right all lot of this like uh, exploitative things going happening with young people in nepal you know you know ami ma especially ab support system teti it's a parents because the parents are not aware right nepal ma like how how you know their children can be victimized bani ra and because the children are vict- like very vulnerable and then some people can be using chat gpt to kind of like you know to mimic that intimacy and try to you know this thing and as you said already of sam elsman open ai unlike wikipedia because which is a open you know this like a crowd source uh, publicly funded thing this is already a proprietary software this is already risky but what about somebody who is not even like you know it is a proprietary system like a rogue element right which is going to use it so i don't know like i am a tech optimist but because the the reason that we are not prepared again that literacy is low right and literacy for exam am i literate bar boy and i know because i might be literate but i am vulnerable to my other connections i know so i'm a vulnerability one it's a very like connected i mean network match honey da i know you might do everything that you can protect yourself but with your connection you're still vulnerable i right? so to is i'm again sorry like i think i'm mixing a lot of things i know so yeah Yeah, privacy is actually a really big concern in in the industry as well. Uh, so I I work for Dell Technologies and we're actually not allowed to use Chat GPT for any kind of generative work, you know, doesn't matter what it is because uh we don't know how that information is is stored. We don't know who has access to that information, right? So for a company that has trade secrets, you know, we're not allowed to u- use any of that. And and Dr. Rai, I mean your point well taken, right? Because Yeah, absolutely. It's it's you know we, we're not at the stage of uh, artificial general intelligence right now, right? So there is no empathy, obviously, but it can mimic empathy, and that's a very good point. And it can extract information from you, and we don't know how that information is going to be used, and that's a big factor, I would say, right? So yeah, talk, talking about this, um, are there other uh, like a security privacy concerns that you see, Dr. Sharma? definitely you see um, uh, concerns in us privacy and security concern is a little bit on the lower side compared to country like nepal why because the data collection in us is very very difficult right because of because of privacy concerns security concerns and everything and then so data sharing and everything is very limited um and then more controlled i would say more controlled it doesn't mean that there are no concerns there are concerns but but a little bit less intense you know the magnitude compared to nepal where uh, uh data sharing is i think more widespread you can collect data on many different aspects and then i think this technology is going to be problematic in the context of nepal more compared to security and privacy concerns here in us so uh which is very very scary uh, uh because uh, uh because this large language models what do they do will is they will crawl all the data whatever data that is available right they will crawl the data and based on that data they infer right that's that's the whole idea right machine learning model so these are way bigger machine learning models than we used to know machine learning models right so um so um of course the concerns are there bias concerns are there you know we are talking a lot about diversity equality inclusion and everything in the equity and then it is going to impact that it is going to again you know unsettle Uh, the things we were uh, talking before on probably we found a way a little bit the direction on how to deal with these things so these technologies are going to again unsettle on our direction and then we have to again navigate and find a new direction hey this is how we are going to deal with this security privacy and every concern having these technologies in our backdrop and then we are using them yeah, yeah this is sorry 
Sorry, go yeah, on. scary kukura gordai. Mala se duita kukura like that really. Eura se as again go kono jere mala se like this machine learning and the large language models they are so greedy, right? Because they they live on the data, right? So the more some kind of like a maybe about the like open gono and from like monstrous in the sense that you know the the door mama one has to the more they eat the more they want to eat, right? So because they get high on their own own power, you know, it's just like a you know, so they have this, they might, they, they might not have their own, like, again, I'm not saying that the machine has some kind of sentience and conscious thing that it is doing, but the people who are driving it, right? You, you so, so, and your articles, especially your, um, a Facebook, your, especially your open AI, Rob Sam Altman and all their, their, their cohort, I don't have any trust on them, right? Because they are these people, the topic of transhumanist one upon so, because, they have this very almost religious fervor about like, you know, being beyond human itself, right? Now. So because they don't see us, they don't see us as their fellow human being. They just see us as some kind of like extra. It's a very extractive mindset. Yeah, you know, they have data matra ine ki tio tio unhe extractive boy ra. So they want to do that and they want to build general intelligence. They want to go to Mars or somewhere. They want to. They want. They are not happy with just being human, right? They want to transcend the humanity itself. So. You have this group of people who have that very religious fervor to be beyond human, and you they have their tools that is like so greedy in itself. So you have this exponential greed, you know, ex with exponent of another exponential, this this delusional greed, right? So you so we are kind of in a way kind of surrendering to that, right? So so even the technology itself can uh, be really good, but then who is Owning it, right? Who is guiding us? And so, I mean, is any Bollywood book about that? Who keep on it? Thread on it. So, I think there is this one word we we came right that inevitable. The technological progression is inevitable. Let's say ek tarikaliya, you know. But what kind of technological progress, right? And in whose ownership? In whose direction? With what guardrails? Do the inevitable sign any day? They want to project that inevitability. Oh my God, this is going to come. You know the way like the colonialist or when they went to this um, third, you know, developing countries, right? They came as this very inevitable force, and everybody had to surrender right? because oh, look at them, look at their ships, look at their guns, look at how awesome they are, and we just like, I mean, they are intimidated by it. I mean, surrender God in the, you know. So we are in some way that similar situation because it seems so powerful, so inevitable. We feel like surrendering to it, but I think we need to kind of like trying to take the hold of like imagination of technology and the ownership of technology in our own hands, right? So and I think this is one of the the struggle that we need to do. So uh, uh, in Dovanji's uh, uh, you know line of thought, I just want to add this. So. Um, these uh, uh, models, what are they essentially doing is they are crawling on the set of data and then somehow they are finding patterns, okay? And then we are, they are giving us information, okay? So um, from the, uh, you know, the, there, are the, there are two um, uh, categories of people, right? One category are researchers. They uh, come up with new knowledge is advancing the state of science. And then there is another category, they use this um, knowledge, right? So these models are crawling on the knowledge that exists and then finding some patterns and then giving us some information. Whether that is a new knowledge, whether that is a new knowledge that is coming from a human brain or not, that's, um, uh, you know, I think I think that is, you know, these models are still not going there, probably, possibly in future, probably it will again unsettle our line of thought, line of direction that we take having these technologies. So these patterns and everything are providing information, not generating probably new, they are generating uh, some information in a coherent way, crawling on past, you know, the set of documents that are available but may not be advancing the state of science, okay? So that's that's there. And then when you have that, then, then the question is, how do you find these patterns in a way these patterns are coming from reliable source? So there is a, now what is happening, it's as if it is there, uncontrolled, uh, no check and balance and everything, it's just there, it crawls and gives you answer based on what you prompt, 
okay? And then the answer may not be reliable. So they now there are other new initiatives happening where, okay, chat GPT works as a base. There is a second layer where after chat GPT provides these answers, you check with the reliable sources. You know, there are, there are sources and then match whether the information that is provided by chat GPT is backed by reliable source and then provide that information out, you know, not just the chat GPT information. So in the company context, what might happen, for example, if Dell wants to use this technology, what Dell might do is use chat GPT as a base. And then there is another layer where Dell has certain limitations there. For example, Dell has its own uh, data source reliable and everything. And then they can control, you know, check and balance the information that is provided by chat GPT and then give that information out. So that way it can be controlled. Even in healthcare, it can be done. So the software will be somehow inside the information that is given will not go out until and unless there is a second balance. And then that that uh, information after you verify that that is reliable information and then it does not compromise any privacy security concerns of patients and then the hospital and everything. And then that information can go out. Actually, that is what we are doing right now because there are so many steps on how you share information, what information that you share, what you don't share and everything, right? So it will come there. So this is just one or two examples of check and balance. And then um, uh, US government and uh, European Union and others, actually that is what they want to do, right? So you want to have check and balance on this technology and then you cannot stop the innovation on these technologies. I think I think it's going to happen, and then we will unsettle, and we find a line of direction, and then move on. Again, we'll be unsettled, and then we'll find a line of direction and move on. Yeah, so absolutely, right? There is some policy level advocacy work that's needed to, um, to make this technology safe for everybody, right? That's one. And then the second thing is, uh, like Dr. Sharma, you were saying, you know, you take the base model and then you feed it new data and then you retrain that model to output something uh, tailored to your needs, right? So that kind of uh, expertise, you know, I mean, that's great, right? Uh, but when is countries like Nepal, you know, with our resources, because it, it requires training these models, requires like a lot of horsepower in terms of compute, right? Like GPU and all that. Um, so is this going to leave countries like Nepal behind because now they're stuck with like whatever Sam Altman and company decides to, you know, put it out through their chat GPT technology, but customizing it to the cultural context or the specific domain context, you know, for their need might not, might not happen in Nepal in a while. Right. So anyway, um, one last question I want to I want to ask before you know we uh, take some questions from the audience uh, is you know very very briefly uh, where do you think this is going? What is the future of this? So far, what I think is it is going to be more refined, refined, and refined, and then so this um, uh, you know refinement will give us answers more like we are writing essays, they will be more human-like. And then there will be the, the, you know, the line, the line that you draw there between whether it is coming from human brain or this, uh, this big, uh, you know, large learning models is a very fine line. And then you have to, you know, you will have challenge on drawing that fine line on whether that is human, you know, created or the machine created. And then I think it will take us to many, you know, it will take us to a different level. So it's um, still um, not uh, much known about that. So I think I think right now we have to find a direction and then we move on. And then when, uh, uh, you know, these technologies get even more refined, then we have to again find new direction. I think it's just a process. You know, there is a, always a struggle, you know, talk of war, right? So technology advances, and then we have to find our way. Technology advances, we have to find our way. So there will be always that struggle between how we check and balance and then how these models are getting more refined and more innovative. So almost nearing like artificial general intelligence at some point, right? Hopefully. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, hopefully or not, but... Yeah. 
I think uh, that's the direction we're headed. Dr. Right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So more like a, a, a purely technological advancement. So of course, this technology is going to be more refined, you know, more sophisticated. But at the same time, about your progress, technological progress, topic of exponential growth months, a linear extrapolation months, you know? technology itself, chat GPT, if it has consumed all the internet, right? What is more to consume? So you're topic of data source matter limitation because it is already so big. So Tabor, uh, quality of information may topical qualitative ad, uh, progression cut the ounce of the question by you, I know. And or could say topic of garbage in garbage out one as they now because like we are also because the there's a lot of fallacious in, information out there, right? And there's a lot of minf, in, misinformation out there. So what if the chat GPT eats its own garbage and you know, so but uh, over the time there's this kind of like is the quality of information is going to be better? Is it going to be worse? To open your or is it going to be stalled? The other question, by you know, the other one, because say it's a big one. Um, it can I think about only only speech ma voice ma goira ko sa you know about chat GPT le yo generation song songe about personalization you know or or AI features incorporate got it can be more integrated more applicable you know maybe it can be used with robotics other to but it's a diverse application you know. The general intelligence is not a Again, so Malaji Kelasandari, I think it can mimic general intelligence. You know? The way we really understand general intelligence, I think, in my personal opinion, I don't think that it is anytime soon, but it can really it can mimic general intelligence. Even Kotizala chat GPT in a general intelligence sponsor, but we know that it is not general intelligence, right? So, the process speculation by you. Now, talking about again, the top technological progression, but what, what about us that we do, right? Nepal Madan, Nepal chat GPT, when I went to 2016, I was very optimistic, right? About AI. Uh, community or create gore etauta gore and then in a way technology create a gorni say about andro more and more because it is becoming more and more sophisticated more and more powerful and we am grip goine rakusa ki in a way uh, it has become oligarchy ne voice again the technological innovation is faced though you know because if you don't have that resource what do you do right ab ufre ra ka pugne bhane astai tara we as a uh, ab Consumer bani, right? So they they go consumer actually know gorni ki even if we cannot create the technology itself from a mechanistic value, but we can be part of the whole conversation of co-creation, right? Like what do we need? What are the regulation we need? What are the what what features we need? So ni tu hi sab mati ani. Even if we are on the consumer side, we can really uh, participate in a more critical, more um uh, kibar name more integrated manner to kind of like um. Uh, Modulate the growth of technology. Now, tackle gone about that. When you let's 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 be part of the conversation. You know, let's be aware. Let's let's claim our space. You know, especially I mean, developing world commands here. Like passive space lines on that. You know, but we are. Let's not take the passive stance, right? Just because you don't have your hand on the uh, the 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 steering doesn't mean that you have a say in where the bus is leading right because we are part of that that duration so kina bhane boli yo bus khase bhane pani marne ho ni ta haina so we have our authority our our ownership ni ta so tu is i mean because it is so impacting all of us so let's try to claim the the ownership you know let's be part of that conversation and let's be very alert and let's be talking and i think this uh this uh webinar is juminar is one of that thing right because you know, let's not be passive recipient of technology. Right? Let's let's be active. You know, um, co-creator. Co I think I think uh, the conversation and discussion has just been starting. It's like not uh, you know we reach to some level uh, and then okay uh, you know this is where uh, the you know we we this is where we are and then this is how the check and balance works. We are not at that stage. So the conversations are in early stage. Everywhere you go, you talk about ChatGPT, you talk about these models, and then how are they impacting in a different context? For example, in US, in uh, France, in uh, UK, in other uh, countries in Nepal, how are they impacting? And then how what people think about these uh, these these models, right? So they there are there are two things: there are regulators, there are users, and then we need awareness on both sides. Is a, is a user, you need awareness. How do you use this technology in very optimal way so that you get information that you want from ChatGPT? That's the best use of technology, right? You are getting that information. In Nepal, uh, information is uh, scarce. So what do you do? 
you get information from here. You don't need to go and then, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, be, uh, you know, be there to not access some information because you have to pay money or something. It doesn't allow, you know, doesn't need, you don't need to pay money. You, you can just uh, get information. And then now you want to get the best information out of what ChatGPT can provide, right? For that one, you can grow awareness. We need awareness. And then from the regulator side too, okay, what kind of check and balance is needed for this technology so that users can get information in some way that is needed. And then so the information gap when everything will be, reduced, you know, minimized, particularly in country like Nepal. And then also there is no misuse of this technology, right? So this conversation has to go on and then we need more conversation on this. Absolutely. Dr. Sharma, Dr. Rai, uh, delightful conversation. Uh, thank you for your expertise uh, and, and talking to, to, to us. So I think uh, we're gonna pause this part of it and then maybe see if we can continue this conversation with some of our audience. Um, if we have questions, you know, perhaps we can take some questions from them um, or comments for that matter. So there, there are some go. questions in the chat box. So um, okay. whichever you feel comfortable answering, please do that. Yeah. Sure. Let me look at that real quick here. One second. It's sometimes hard to find chat. All right, so um, so I'm going to be reading some of this. Let me see. Uh -oh. right, we can create large language model for Nepal and Nepali context. It's a matter of funding, absolutely, right? Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, Arthi or anyone else, do you guys see any? Uh, uh, if I may. If, yes, please. Yeah. Arthi, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so there is a question from Dr. Wogley. I think it's very interesting. Um, Dr. Wogley, if you want to, we can unmute you as well. But the question here is, how do um, false, how do you see the issue of fact value dichotomy sorted out in the uh, in the age of Gen AI? So what he's um, saying, let me read the whole thing just to sort of give the context. Thank you for participating, providing a deep thoughts. Among many things, your mention of providing accurate and unbiased information is very interesting. I assume this is more straightforward in case of STEM fields. Outside, however, I'm not sure how this applies where um, interpretation is a big deal and there is potential for drawing false equivalencies. How do you see this issue of fact value dichotomy sorted out in the age of Gen AI? Right. So, um, so here, the, these are, of course, there is that challenge, you know, when, when you have um, some mathematical problem, then you know uh, exactly what is the, you know, um, accurate uh, value and not. And then so here, when ChatGPT infers something, then it has to provide the source. And then it would be the responsibility for the user to go and verify uh, that source. And then whether that is legitimate source or not. So how do you verify? Probably that is from some novel, from some um, uh, you know some uh, some books, um, uh, and then some articles, um, uh, some publications that are reliable, authentic, and everything. So it has to be verified. I think that responsibility now falls to the user. Uh, Isme, and I think that is uh, factual, the bio, which is like very subjective. So this like you're going interpretation. I think like, uh, is it Elon Musk, right? He wants to come with some like right wing chat GPT, um, truth AI or something like that, because he thinks that oil uh, chat GPT is very liberal, I know, liberal bias. I and mean, that's his claim, right? So there is always this thing because uh, again, so this feeds on whatever is there. And if it's, if it's kind of like maybe sourcing primarily from, let's say Reddit, the conclusion is going to be different, right? If you're sourcing from Twitter, it is going to be conclusion is going to be very different, right? So that subjectivity is there. And especially 
in the very narrow topics when they then there's not a lot of so so that's why that's why i like that that fact checking and critical thinking this metacognitive skills those are those skills are going to be very people can even like use chat gpt as a validation of their bias you know oh chat gpt is saying and because this must be true of truth ai said this thing and people might even choose their own source that oh i trust this truth ai so it is validating right because truth ai talks in this like a voice of donald trump with so much confidence so yeah, so it's it's yeah it's yeah the 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 landscape is kind of like um, fragile in that sense, eh? Yeah, it. You know, Dr. Sharma, you're right. I mean, the responsibility falls on the user, but you know, um, we don't always know if that responsibility will be exercised, right? Um, so, so, so that's why you need awareness, um, yeah. and then uh, awareness, and then so the uh, the interpretation that is given by ChatGPT. I wanted to add it here is just one interpretation. You know, this is the one line of thought. That is not the universal line of thought. You know, that's one line of thought. If the users are aware that that is just one interpretation, not the universal, you know, that is the common interpretation, then how you think is even, even if you are interpreting the literature, then you say that, okay, this is one line of thought. What is my line of thought? Do I agree with this line of thought? And then when you start thinking that way, then you would look in, look into this interpretation in a completely different way. And then that is what is missing, or that is what we need to make the users aware of this technology. So the answers are just one line of thought. And then what is your line of thought? Or do you agree with this one? Do you think that this is accurate, whether the source, and then um, wh where, where is it coming from? And then so you go and look into the source and then see whether you agree with that answer or you do not agree with that answer. If you do not agree with that answer, what is your answer? So the risk that I see, right, is um, I think Dr. Rai brought this up earlier, is that you know they're using this generative uh, AI in um, uh, healthcare apps, right? And I've seen some of that as well. So you already are taking like a vulnerable population, right? And you are providing um, a very unchecked um, source of information, um, mimicking em empathy, you know, uh, to those to those users. So what potential harm can it do, right? That that is a a, a big question, you know, on my mind. And I, as I am like working on Hopebox, which is a suicide prevention app, you know, you're dealing with a population that is at their worst, right? Uh, pretty much. So should something like a generative AI be a part of that solution, even be a part of that solution, you know, given the unknown context of the information it's feeding, right? So, yeah, uh, I hope that answers the question. Next question. So there's another very interesting question from Bijesh Mishra. There are several Nepali tech experts, and he's referring to AI tech specialized in the US and around the globe. I'm wondering what is limited them to start startups to develop LLMS and LI tech specialized to South Asia or Nepal? Devanzi? Yeah, okay. again, so um, I don't know. So about my I think. 2016, as I said, when I went back to Nepal, right? So I had so much optimism, right? You know, who can do. But about all the you competition for leveling field, I think it's even go corner zero sort of as you can add, you know, it's so imbalanced voice, you it's really hard to compete, you know. About topic, even about all the you know, about Google, right? Open AI may is the competition. So Google is kind of, you know, like with all that money, you know, about early about open AI money. That's a key unit go like got the investment loss match, you know, even like unit the 10 years, 20 years go gold racket go to because they are so like, you know, the AGI on the unit go gold and a deep mind or go. That's why they are willing to do so much money, you know. About Hamrook is even like when you're like your usability, they are not building chat GPT because they want to help some like some academic teachers like us, right? Because that's not their primary goal. Chat GPT is just their one step towards that, 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 that religious forward to get the AGI itself. That's why they are willing to risk the thing, right? So you language do we have enough investors? Do we have enough budget to do that? I don't know. 
यो यो फिल्ड्स को मान्छे होइन हैन तर मैले आएर हेर्दा खेरि चाहिँ मैले के देख्छु भन्दा रि या लेट्स आई एम नट ट्राइंग टु बी पेसिमिस्ट हैन दैट इज एन अप्सन टु डू दैट त्यहाँ पनि लेट्स हाम्रो एनर्जी गरौं तर इट माइट बी डिफिकल्ट राइट टु टु क्रिएट समथिंग दैट स्किल दैट उ अनि फेरि के हुन्छ तपाईको अब एलएलएम मा तपाईको स्ट्रेंथ कम भयो भने फेरि यो चाहिँ यो यो फिल्ड चाहिँ कस्तो हो भने मशिन लर्निङ मा तपाईको अ जुन तपाईको अनक्यानी भ्यालु भन्छ नि हैन विथ द रियलिस्टिक मा If you can pass that on Kenny Valley, then you are effective, right? Now, that only one or two boys. Because oil is something that you have to even you about you are serious, right? Now, right? Now, Amazon Echo, in a way, a lot of you chat assistant or it is in the market failure ones, right? Now, because they could not really go past that on Kenny Valley, right? Now, and if you buy it, see, um, so it's very critical. And if you buy it, it's not like. uh get manufacturing shoes you know so you really have to go past that on canny valley that critical point you know so they were i mean sabai te banayo ma hamro sakai jae je thali sakeko tar to on canny pass bhayo you know aba yo kunai euta field u bhayo bhani that's a big risk so i don't know who is going to willing to put the risk there but aile chai ma chai mero personally bhaneko hai mero energy chai arko lnm banaune bhanda pani more like trying to make people aware you know let's let's the consumer awareness me ma chai mero personal energy garna khoji rahechu but i think isma gokarni ji and saurabh ji might have different take so ma isma bich ma ekchu thapi halchu hai ke bhane mero question na dik clear garna khoje jasto hamro jun south asia ma le kina focus garirakha chu bhane south asia ko language of origin bhaneko mostly asam alma sanskrit athwa we we call it devanagari kena english euta ail sama develop bhako jati technology ho so mostly they are focused on english languages so almost they are worldwide so hamro yo area bhaneko chai next global economy right global global economic trend driven in this or any we have a big population if we consider uh, the whole in just south asian area so why not we enter into it uh, on the over the long term otherwise yeah middle now gari pani can we start the discussion so someone come forward to do that venture mero chai question chai tyo area ma alikati focused okay so um so this uh, so now there is a new uh, direction on developing these models not as big as chatgpt chatgpt is very very big uh, if we go into numbers then i think 170 billion parameters or beyond very very big uh, number of parameters and then if you um, use a very simple uh, cell phone and then you want to use this technology then there is a you know delay on how you get answers you know there's there is a, there is this latency and all that too particularly that comes into picture in nepal when there is a bandwidth is very very low and then you are interacting with chat gpt platform probably the response time is going to be very very slow right so um the new initiative is do we need this big model right if you focus on healthcare if you focus in some particular aspect you do not need this big model okay so can we have now small models for example we call them sparse models focusing on one particular topic one particular area or one particular direction our company is taking for example in the context of nepal just um, healthcare in nepal right and then how do we create these new models they are small relatively small so that you could have fast response time and then uh, you could you could train them well so that you can filter the bias and everything because when you think of the information that is available in the whole internet then filtering the bias is a challenging um, uh, topic itself right so that way you have control on the information that you fit to the model so when you have control on the information you fit to the model then you can trust more the response that you get from the chat gpt model that you are uh, running on that data right so this is a new um, aspect line of direction happening in us as well so there is a lot to uh, know and then probably this new development on you know developing these new small sparse models will help in the context of nepal as well and then probably this direction will give us new insight on if we want to develop these models in the context of nepal then what would be the best approach to you know somehow poke into this problem so that would be very nice it is coming so we have to still see how it is going to go and then from that probably we can learn some insights and then we can apply those insights to develop such model in the context of nepal yeah that's from yeah at that eh? um 
right? Uh, so I think, again, Sego Konji like, really raised this nice point. So that sparse uh, model and hybrid models, eh? So personally, I've always been this proponent because large language model, uh, we cannot compete, you know? So I'm going to say, what's up on that? Here, the topic of media, you're a technology hype card in some time, you know? Like AI, machine learning, machine learning, deep learning, or deep learning, or large language model, or because the reason people create that hype is because they want to get the funding and all that. And when a politics solid as Hunter, this is where that because because they have this funding politics, they want to create that hype, right? And that's what I want to tell young Nepali uh, technical uh, Uru, you know, let's not just follow the hype, you know, let's look at the history, let's look at the politics, let's look at the cultural contest. Let's try to find what is our destination, right? Amru need you know, do we really need that large model? Do we really need that thing? You know, so this may compete So it's about like, like let's have a new kind of imagination of technology itself. And the destination then we can have a lot of more original thinking. You know? And even there's a lot of debate, like if deep learning language learning model is the only path or about again that about topic uh, academic ego funding politics or it's all it has, you know but i think like for us for for people like i mean developing country like we need to like maybe champion the the smaller or hybrid or sparse models right because that's i think is more realistic for us right so we 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 talk a lot on we do not want to reinvent the wheel on developing new technology you know, so because reinventing the wheel might not take us anywhere, or you have to invest so much on uh, you know this new direction, right? So what do you do is typically in technology, whatever exists there, if it works, you take that and then uh, you know uh, modify it in the context of how you want to use per particular um, uh, topic, particular area, right? I think I think a country like Nepal, we should not focus on reinventing the wheel, we should focus on whatever existing technology that is there, we take that technology, and then modify and then make it better in the context of Nepal. I think I think this chat GPT model also gives us that opportunity, we take these models, how do they work, and then that technology, we take it there, and then we adapt it in the context of Nepal, that 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 will help us better cost effective and everything and then i think i think that that's the way to go in in my opinion yeah the way that you know uh, open ai you know you know made this possible right they they were founded back in like 2015 i believe um and they had a partnership with microsoft uh initially for like i think 1 billion dollars and now renewed for like 10 billion dollars right so it's not only the parameters that's huge it's the financial burden on all of this processing, that's also very huge, right? That Nepal perhaps cannot replicate. Um, but there was an interesting uh, research study done by, I believe, Stanford that took the uh, the ChatGPT 3.5 model and then replicated that for, I think, like $780. Don't quote me on this number, but $700 something dollars, um, and it was found to be almost as effective. But I completely agree with the point that reinventing the wheel is not necessary, right? trying to find what, the, like Dr. Rice said, what is your objective? What are we trying to do here, right? Um, and, and, and catering that solution um, to optimize for the, for the result, the objective that we have is probably the right approach for Nepal and for other countries as well. I mean, this has already been done, so why reinvent? Uh, next question, do we have time still? So yeah, a few minutes. Maybe this this can be a good question to um, close us out. Um, here, Aramish Adhikari is asking sort of a personal question. I have a question for the panelists. How would you use Chat GPI in your research area as a researcher effectively? Um, I um, talked about it a little bit before as well. I used to um, know the state of the art on the line of research that I do. It helped me to figure out um, maybe what articles that I'm going to look at to make sure that, uh, you know, what is the progress on that particular area. And then I also use it to write a little bit of, uh, we call it in, in technical uh, writing, um, probably you all are uh, aware, we say there is a little bit of cosmetic part 
there is a technical part. Cosmetic part is, for example, you have introduction, literature review to uh, some, uh, some discussion uh, that have to go in articles, but that they are not the main technical contribution that you are contributing in that paper. And then, so what do you do is that when you use some information as a first draft coming from ChatGPT or other sources, then you can actually work on top of uh, that draft. So it's not the, you know, I try to use very minimum because I want to use my own, my own words and everything, and then it gives me line of thought. But when I use it, I take it as a first draft. And then, and then when you look into the final submission that I do to articles, then, uh, you know, almost nothing is there, uh, whatever I borrowed in the, in the first draft. Um, so uh, that's how, uh, and then you can use it to crawl information to know what is happening. And then after you collect that information, then you can work on that information on top of there and then modify it based on your need and everything, verify um, all that you could do. Okay. Uh, you can use it as a template generator. If you want to write a proposal, if you want to write a paper, you first tell them, okay, this is my requirement, just give me. So tell topic or a template design. So you take the template, it has a necessary part, you know, of topic of a proposal over because it takes a while to put all these things together, right? Especially topic of an earlier career, you know. And then uh, soon I'm okay, PowerPoint template use got to just there. It gives you that thing. I know this template use gonna mills her. And the other obvious one is the literature review. And it's really good because uh topic because aggregate board things because some people are like so it's a really good aggregator of all the disparate information out there, right? Now. Again, you can use it as a start point to get that you say, and you can also like try to because prompt, you don't have to be a prompt engineer, right? To learn how to do the prompt. It has skill one. Now, but Google map on the plan, the Google search gone up and Google skill science, you know, just because searching, because what is the combination of keyboard that you should put, right? Do you want to use the scholar? Do you want to use like about the like, file type? semicolon pdf you know, file type semicolon ppt because say the way we use different combination of keyword and this this thing in your google searching email or whatever search or uma you know this hidden top you can try to learn different like a prompt uh combinations to make your search you know because there's different so let's look at some like uh tutorial itself and what is the available thing so you don't have to use but like first i have to use keyboard shortcut ones you know yeah some people they use like everything all keyboard shortcut so you try to find out right what what is the what is the range of tool you know do you want like five knives do you want two knives you know how frequently you cook, what kind of level you cook one, because that's the you know. So you try to find your 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 range, your toolkit, I know you're gonna suck noon. And your org is quite the main interesting one. You say about illi topic of kale kai of even by the processor kural, you know, topic of data generate garni, Python code or topic of visual simple visualize gone up, you know. It can even you give you the thing. And orgu kura about you last language models, it is very good at very general tasks, you know. So the topic about a simple of a scatter plot, whatever, because it has more data and the quality ram runs so, a more specialized crowd when it has sparse data. So quality begins so, up if you want to use some very like a general uh, data visualization things like, you know, regression, uh, correlation to graph, whatever it can give you that, you know, to the black code or dinosaur. You know, so, so. And you can also use it to give feedback, right? Okay, give me feedback on this. I you know, but grammar correct feedback with this topic is not critical feedback when then so on your arc sometimes you feel stuck right top of the idea generate gone upon it so and then call the topic writers block one because just the researcher block back or something you can even say that okay your topic might give me some like 10 ideas right 10 grand ideas or give me that one right so you can so you can use it both as a uh congregator in a topic aggregator code room i use funny gonna stop news or about to get it uh, divergent, is it convergent or divergent process? You can use it to converse the information. You can also use it as this divergent uh, tool so need to, to take you to different directions. Yeah, you know, so the case, you to inside generate Gornog Live, you can use it. So, yeah, it, it has a lot of use. All right. Thank you, Dr. Sharma, Dr. Rai. Wonderful conversation. Thank you for the audience for uh, you know posing your questions. Um, I think we'll have to close now uh, over time. Uh, uh, 
Dr. Sadiq Prashna, uh, do you want to take over? Yes, um, thank you. Thank you. First of all, um, please join me in thanking our panelists, Dr. Dovan Rai and Dr. Gokarna Sharma, and our moderator, Dr. Saurav Sresta. Uh, I'm old school, so I'm just going to clap, but, you know, use your whatever AI methods to, you know, thank them uh, in this seminar. Um, as the title said, um, it highlighted uh, challenges and opportunities um, uh, in, in this field. Um, I think, you know, and there's a saying, you know, I saw, I came, I conquered. But I guess with the knowledge that we got, we can safely say they came, but they're not going to conquer. Uh, so we'll just have to learn to live around it and uh, deal with it and make the best of this AI and chat GPT. First of all, um, also, I would like to thank uh, the committee. You know, we have an event committee, you know, Dr. Samir Kanal, Dr. Bhuvan Thapa, and Dr. Sasta Sakya. Uh, special thanks to Dr. Milan Sresta and Arati Maliku. You know, they were both very instrumental with the logistics and uh, make this happen, uh, make this event uh, successful. Uh, thank you all, you know, from different time zones, different countries, uh, whatnot. You know, I'd like to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, whatever it is. Some of you are, you know, going to bed. Some of you are waking up. Uh, some of you are in the middle of the day. Uh, but I think it is a lot of commitment for you to join and, and try to learn um, as well. Our committee will be, you know, having uh, multiple events. Um, the next one will be in sometime in December. We'll keep you posted. Uh, we're not just doing in, you know, chat GPT and AI, but we'll be covering a lot of uh, fields in academia, but we'll keep you posted. I think one of the things that you all, you know, who joined today will get is a survey. Uh, we'd like to get a survey from you, uh, feedback from you in terms of, you know, if there are ways that we can improve this um, 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 event. And also, you know, what are the other events that you might be interested in, and we'll try to put them together. With that said, um, uh, you know, thank you all. Uh, we will see you in about two months. Have well, a one, last, one last thought is uh, if anyone wants to connect on, on LinkedIn, please feel free to at least add, you know, add me. And I'm sure Dr. Rai, Dr. Sharma would be okay with that as well. And we can uh, continue this conversation if need be offline. Yeah, this, this conversation is very